I'm James Murphy from mcoding.io, where I offer nine-week weekend courses in programming. Today, we're going to be taking a look at another LeetCode hard interview question. This time, we'll be implementing a primitive kind of regular expression matcher. For this problem, we have to write a regular expression matcher that can match patterns of any of these three kinds of things. We have literal lowercase letters, A to Z, uh, the period character, the dot, which will match any character, and the star, which modifies a previous character so that it can be seen any number of times. So I think A to Z and dot are pretty self-explanatory, but just in case you've never seen it before, let me explain what star does. So if I had A star, then this pattern should be matched by either the empty string or a single A or two A's or three A's and so on and so forth. So we can put these things together. I can say A dot B star and then something like that would need to match like AC, ACB, ACBB, ABBBBBB, uh, AXB, and so on and so forth. There's not a whole lot to the theory of how I'm going to go about this uh, in this video. So I'll just keep this uh, picture to the left here. And if I need that space, I'll go ahead and use it. But for this problem, I think I'm just going to go straight into the code. OK, so because of the nature of this matching function, I went ahead and wrote a bunch of test cases because I know it'll be really easy to make tiny mistakes. And if I do make a mistake, I want to catch it as soon as possible. So you can see I've just written a main function here uh, with a bunch of tests. This is the string that I am matching, the pattern that it's supposed to match, and then the value that I'm expecting from my isMatch function. So what it does is if it doesn't work, then it just prints out failed, and then it tells me what the string and pattern were. So I can then go back and look. OK, let's start things off with the trivial case. Uh, if the pattern is empty, then the string better be empty too. So I'll go ahead and run that, and we can see that it got rid of like one test case. Next, I'll try to get it working if the pattern doesn't have any stars in it. In this case, I'll imagine that I have my string s and my pattern p, and I'm just going to keep a pointer to where in the string I am and where in the pattern I am, and then I'm going to move these things along in unison, and then if ever I reach a point, where I see something that's supposed to be there in the pattern that's not in the string, then I would say, OK, that's a false. Um, but otherwise, I would get all the way to the end. Uh, and if that, that happens, then if I'm also at the end of the string, then that will be uh, a match. So let me start by making uh, this index for s and the index for p. And then let me just loop over uh, the pattern. So I'll say while the p index uh, is less than the length of the pattern, then we'll do something. So I'll check if the uh, s index is less than the length of s, uh, and either the p has a dot, either the pattern is just a dot, or the characters match. So I'll look at the p at the p index. Either that is a dot, or p at the p index uh, equals s at the s index. If that's the case, then everything's fine. And then I just advance both indices. Otherwise, something went wrong, and that's not a match. OK, running the tests again, we see that we now pass all the tests that don't have any stars in them. 
that should have had a false uh, answer where they didn't match up. Now when we get to uh, the end of the pattern, then we just return uh, true, or actually we don't return true, we return true if we're also at the end of the string. So I'll say return uh, whether s index uh, is the length of s. And running the test again, we now see that we pass all of the tests uh, that don't have any stars in the pattern. In order to get stars working, I want to keep the same kind of idea, but when I'm at some arrow, uh, I need to also look ahead one to see whether or not there's a star there. So that means that I'm actually going to need to uh, stop one character before the end of the pattern, since I am going to be looking one ahead, I don't want to jump off the end, uh, which means that when I exit the loop, I'm not expecting S to be at the end, but to be one before the end. And then I need to check that last character. So I'll say I'm one before the end and uh, something similar to this. And that should hold. So this opens things up for me to do a uh, one character look ahead. And if I run the test again, we see that everything that was passing is still passing. Good. Next, I know that I'm going to have to do something different depending on whether there is a star or not. So let me just check if uh, p at the p index plus one is a star, then I'll do something. I'll just pass for now. Otherwise, I'll do what I had before. So I'll just put that in the else clause and indent it. So the tricky part about the star is that I don't know how many characters from the string I should eat, whether it's A or AA or AA. There's an infinite number, theoretically, of possible um, different situations where I might need to eat 0, 1, 2, 3, or any number of characters. So I think that we're going to have to determine, uh, given the string, let's look ahead and see what are the minimum and maximum number of characters that I might need to eat given the string that I see. So let's let n be the number of characters that the star is going to eat. So zero is fine, and then we need the upper bound. So I'm just gonna loop through the string at the current position, and while I keep seeing the same character, I'll increase n. So while the current index plus n is less than the length of the string, and we see something like this, um, either it was a dot star, or we're seeing the correct character now at index, um, the s index plus n, then I'll go ahead and increase n by one. So at this point, either I got to the end of the string or I saw a bad character. So that tells me that that's the maximum value of n. Now I need to go through and try all those different values of n. So I'll say while n is bigger than or equal to zero, then I'll do a recursive call is match s and p. Now I don't actually want to use uh, the current s and p's. I want to modify them. I want basically to start s at this index and p uh, two later, one for the character and one for the star that I'm going to eat up. So instead of modifying or rather making copies of these s and p at every step, uh, let me actually just take these parameters and make those um, arguments to the function. So I'll add in an s index, which is initially zero, and a p index, which is zero by default. Uh, and then here, I'll just pass in the new s index, which is the old one plus n, and the new p index, which is the old one plus two, and make that recursive call that way. Then, 
if it matches, assuming uh, that many um, characters for the star, then I'll return true. Uh, otherwise, I have to decrease n, n minus equals 1. And then if I try everything and nothing works, then I'll just return false. So running the program again, uh, out of range. OK, so because I switched things to uh, using indices instead of using uh, the actual strings, those strings aren't getting any smaller. So I need to think more about my base case. I don't need to check if the pattern is empty. The pattern isn't changing. So uh, what I really need to check is whether the index that I'm supposed to be checking at is uh, at the end of um, the pattern. And then in that case, the index of s better be at the end of the string. OK, let's run the test one more time. And that time it passes. OK, so since everything passes, let's go ahead and copy paste this into leak code. All right, here we go. Let's see if we get it. All right, success. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you have any problems that you think I should try to solve.